Hi and welcome everyone. My name is Menina Chow. I'm part of the SAP community team and I'm very happy to have you uh, joining us to do today's SAP community call, which is how SAP Sustainability Control Tower can help you transform your business towards holistic steering and reporting. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping notes. Um, feel free to post your questions anytime. We have the Q&A button for you ready for all your questions. We'll have time at the end reserved to address your questions. Feel free also to uh, chat with us. There's a chat functionality and um, yeah, with that um, short introduction of our speaker, uh, with me is Christian po Polivka. He is a director within the Sustainability Solution Management of SAP SE. And um, yeah, you have, um, I think, more than 15 years of experience with SAP's sustainability solutions um, while you were holding positions like in consulting, pre sales, and business development. And I think it's, yeah, really great to have you with us. Uh, I don't want to talk too much uh, about you. So I'd love to hand it over to you, Christian, to introduce yourself and also to dive into the topic. Thanks a lot, Menina. And yeah, also warm welcome from my end. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, contribute to our SAP community. And um, I'm really um, welcome you to the sustainability session. Um, this is one of a series. So as already mentioned, today we will look at sustainability performance and reporting, um, particularly around our new tool, which is about to be launched, which is called Sustainability Control Tower. Good, then let's jump into it. First of all, um, standard procedure, certain content, what you will see is forward looking. So therefore, please be aware that um, if you make any decisions in terms of uh, product purchasing decisions, uh, this should not be based on the content which you see today. Anyhow, all the um, forward looking statements and particularly solution screenshots, which are in terms of lab preview, I have marked them with a separate label later on. You will see that explicitly in the presentation. And it's also that um, we ask you not to forward these presentations without our um, approval, basically. What I have prepared for the next 40 minutes, um, or 45 minutes to, to also keep uh, us enough time for Q&A in the end. So for this 45 minutes, I have three sections. I want to get all of us basically on the same page and do a quick introduction of what we see and what is going on around the um, domain in the market when it comes to holistic steering reporting. That's the first block. The second block is really just um, briefly to understand how this session fits into the overall portfolio of SAP, so on sustainability intro. And the third and the main section then will be around the new product sustainability control tower. So, I mean, this was already covered with the intro um, session on sustainability, all the market drivers, what we see. But what I wanted to focus particularly on and draw your attention to is the, the notion around the investors community. So you could really argue that 10 years ago, sustainability reporting was a, a marketing or PR activity for a lot of companies. And what we see now more and more, it's getting so critical for our customers so that it is in the end determined to which conditions they get um, uh, loss on the uh, capital market. So in the end, giving them access to capital and determine to which conditions. So therefore, that really changed the entire um, topic and also the importance for our 
customers, obviously. And this goes hand in hand with a lot of other changes and pressure points, regulations increase. But um, I would say this is a main driver here. And therefore, this has really got uh, on the table of our CEOs that uh, they want to manage sustainability properly to have a competitive advantage, but also to make sure that the perception of their company is well perceived in the outside. If we look at the topic around reporting and particularly, and um, you might have um, asked yourself why we calling that holistic steering reporting and not sustainability reporting. For, for us, it was actually quite from the beginning clear that we want to not emphasize or particularly call it sustainability performance management or reporting because we are very much convinced that this is just part of a business strategy. So therefore we don't want to emphasize it separately. It needs to be part of a company's strategy. And um, that's why we call it holistic steering and reporting. And if we look at uh, reporting as such, uh, the trends, what we see, and this is the view from more from the financial reporting, but um, you could also start from the sustainability side. So basically, in the past, a lot of companies had their financial reporting being done and sustainability reporting being done separately. And um, a lot of companies still do so. But you see then as a next step in this evolution is definitely towards an integrated um, reporting and integrated performance management. And this is what a lot of companies already embraced. Um, SAP ourselves, we are doing that since several years. And we also see that at a lot of customers. But, but still the, the entire, the fact that we do have a lot of different frameworks and different standards doesn't make it uh, easy towards that integrated performance management. But we see um, also like uh, IFRS has announced to have um, additional sustainability aspects being um, formulated in the IFRS standard. So all these kind of indicators give us clear guidance that um, sustainability, so speak of financials and non-financials will be reported in the future together. And the last step, what we also see, and this is in line with a lot of our customers is this um, impact measurement. So what is the, the actual impact of a company's business, what they do and the valuation of that to society or the environment. And uh, that comes along with certain initiatives. Um, one you might have heard of is the VBA, um, standing for Value Balancing Alliance. So here we really collaborate with leaders in the industries, in different industries, to get certain mechanisms and also tangible values then behind the non-financials so that uh, we get on the monetary level, one level of comparable um, measures in, in the uh, integrated reporting. So that's a clear trend what we see. And with that also come things like auditability. Um, as we have seen in the past, sustainability reports um, might not have been that critical subject of audits, but, but in the future, you can be sure the um, big force or external auditors in general, they will also have a close look at ESG performance of your company. And therefore, as a clear basis, they want to see a robust and auditable data and processes behind that. 
And the whole thing gets really tricky if we look at the environment. So all of that is driven by a lot of regulations. Uh, this ask for hyper-transparency in the ESG area, a lot of different standards um, are trying to formulate that and give guidance on that. And I found this number really impressive. Looking across all the different frameworks, there are more than 5,000 KPIs. On the other hand, um, the implementation according to these different frameworks is way behind. So I think that makes it clear in the, where are we in regards to this transparency and how robust this is done. And this is also what we hear from our customers. With all these different frameworks, um, often the sustainability departments, they just overwhelmed and they need to prioritize which framework they need to um, report on what is most important for the industry, for their region. So it's really a dilemma and um, it's hard for them to make the right decisions to um, be focused on what has the best impact for their company. Then I also added this slide just to, to get a bit of a feeling in on the degree of the complexity here. So. It's, it's not just standards and initiatives, which we have here. We also talk about solid regulations and laws like the EU taxonomy. So companies have to respond to them and need to follow them. And also there are standards like TCFD, which have been voluntary, but we see them now being adopted and forced by several countries. So it, it's really a lot of movement in that area and companies need to have a close eye and make their own decisions, what is important for them. And that was also then the, the basis for us when we designed our new solution to respond to all of that. But I come then to that in the, in the Next section. Before that, um, let me quickly introduce um, the sustainability portfolio of SAP uh, for those who haven't joined the earlier session. First of all, I think it's super important to recognize the strong focus of SAP on the area around sustainability. Um, this is a visualization which goes out to almost every customer when uh, the concepts or the intelligent enterprise is being presented there. And you see sustainability is really embedded here in the center, um, being part of the intelligent suite and the industry cloud. So it's particularly important to see that this was not driven by a hand of sustainability people. This is really driven by our leadership who is putting this strong focus on the topic sustainability. And I come to that later also to give you an idea of the investments, what we do. It's really on two sides. Um, we investing in dedicated sustainability applications like um, the sustainability control tower, or you might have heard the product footprint management and the EHS portfolio. So these are really dedicated applications. But on the other hand, we are also investing heavily in all the cross line of business applications to basically consume these um, specific sustainability informations and make it tangible and operational then in the daily life. And I come to that in a second then. So if we look at sustainability, we basically structure our portfolio in four pillars. So you see here the three um, chasing zero themes on climate action with zero emissions. This is everything around carbon management, emissions management. And here we have our EHS applications 
on um, environment management, emissions management, and the product footprint management application. And then there is the, the bucket around the circular economy, where we have our waste application, but also the new applications around responsible design and production to support the circular, circularity right from the beginning and focusing on the packaging and tax um, aspects in that context. And then the third theme here, social responsibility. This is a lot about the people dimension of sustainability, um, saving, safeguarding the employees of a company, but also looking at the impacts for the society. And here we have our EHS applications, speaking of health and safety, risk assessments, in incident management for the company or in conjunction with our human resource applications. And all of that is basically like an umbrella put together with the holistic steering reporting portfolio um, bucket, which we see here on top. Oops. And um, the, the leading product here is the sustainability control tower. So that just to basically give you uh, a bit of an orientation where are we investing in and what are the different areas, how we structured our portfolio. And with that, I would basically go into the sustainability control tower. Before we go to the solution capabilities and what we are working on, um, let me quickly introduce the, the essence of the philosophy, how we work here. And this is then also getting back to the two areas of purpose built versus line of business um, S4 and different line of business applications. So we are convinced that the sustainability dimension needs to be embedded into the intelligent enterprise. And based on that, uh, we, we can then get um, a real performance management done based on the data transparency and the activity, the, the processing actions we can do then. And how that looks like, uh, let me give you an indication with this animation here. So the first step is obviously SAP is established and is strong on managing any kind of business processes in the company. So we have a lot of different applications and that's where we have a lot of experience. And as I mentioned earlier, we have now embedded the sustainability dimensions into a lot of those. And I come back to that in a second with a couple of examples. So by managing these processes, we actually do have direct access to the information, to the data. And when it comes to sustainability performance management and reporting, these data are, for a lot of our customers, um, a main challenge. So, and we basically say, if you manage your business processes, you have the data already available, and we want to make sure you have direct access to them and leverage them. So this is basically creating this transparency with tapping into the underlying business applications. And the next step is then really to make this data available in a very granular manner in this key figure ledger. So all this data need to be now harmonized, structured along leading structures so that it can be consumed then in the analytic applications and used for reporting. So this is the next level then, next step um, with uh, doing the insights. But it, it needs to be clear that uh, the real heavy lifting is really step two to get the data, the access to the data. 
which um, as I was saying, we are convinced that um, we can ease the pain here for our customers as we do have access to the data. And then the analytics layer on top um, is kind of an easier thing, basically, if the data is available in good and solid structure. And in the same way, then doing the disclosures to internal or external stakeholders. And then the fourth step, again, is a key differentiator when it comes to SAP, because as we started with the business process, got an understanding how we perform against our targets. And then we have the chance also to get back into the underlying applications and make sure we improve them so that we really have an impact on what is going on. And examples for that, this is not just a vision, this is already in place. So um, on the side of the product footprint management, for example, we proactively push the product footprint information into purchasing, purchasing orders or into inventory management. So at the point of decision, the, the, the end users who might not be sustainability folks, but they will have the information at hand to make the right decision in terms of not just monetary or time, also having sustainability information as a decision criteria. And we do the same um, next month in for the business planning, there comes sustainability information being embedded and also transportation management footprint information will be coming in Q1 next year. So you see, we, we have these purpose-built sustainability applications. They do their job. Uh, the experts work with them. And then we make sure that all of that stuff is getting proactively pushed into the intelligent enterprise to have the real impact there where it belongs to. And this is what we call the, the virtual circle for holistic business transformation. So again, holistic business, creating value, not just on a monetary point, financial value creation, also looking at the ESG values. So this is the, the overarching philosophy, uh, how we look at sustainability. And this is also essence then for the sustainability control tower. Um, if we look at the, the goal, what we wanted to achieve with the tool, based on what I just explained, it's, it's clear uh, that um, there need to be certain analytics capabilities available to understand um, what can be, where are we towards the targets. But um, it was clear from the beginning, we need to go beyond that. So that the performance management is also a key element here. And also then the impact measurement. So looking at the individual building blocks of the solution, um, it's purposely that we start here with data management as we see that as the foundation. So this is really crucial to get the, the remaining processes and capabilities then basically building on this data management. And when it says here data management, this includes the data acquisition, but also a strong focus on the process. How do you gather the data with workflow capabilities, approval processes, sign-offs, so that in the end, when the data is aggregated in this key figure ledger, so that you are then uh, really comfortable and, and confident that the data is high quality available. And this is also where you have then all this harmonization and the enrichment capabilities to, to get them structured according to your leading organizational and HR structures, so which is the basis then for doing right performance insights 
which is the next step. So I said, data is then there managed in a proper structure. So then having the analytic tools to do the drill downs, slice and dice it, to really understand what are the patterns, where are certain improvement potentials. This is really then the next uh, block of capabilities. And this also goes, there's kind of a, a blurry uh, line between performance insights and performance improvement, which is the next one. Because um, with tools like um, simulations, what if simulations, value driver trees, we already have the tools to really understand where are the, the most relevant areas, where do we need to put our initiatives, measures in place, abatement project, projects to, to really have the best impact on our performance. So that's then the performance management block. And um, last thing, or not last, but next thing then would be the, um, the reporting and disclosure uh, capabilities. Obviously, this is also crucial to communicate to the external or internal stakeholders on your performance. And this is then where we basically want to go beyond an annual creation of a report. So we really envision here at least a monthly, monthly um, time snap so that the performance can really be tracked on a monthly basis and you can work against certain trends. So therefore the, the granularity of the data and the reporting cycles are much more frequent than what we see today. And this is also what our customers are expecting. And the last block here is, and this is not yet available then with the first release, which is planned for December, 2021. But we see that as crucial for the future, as we hear that more and more from our clients, the desire to, on the one hand, share ESG data within the value chain and supply chain, um, and also to get your individual ESG performance into context. So do benchmark with uh, leaders in the industry so that you really get a feeling of where are you. So that would be the business network and the communication within the supply chain. Good. Then this is a, a similar view on the solution capabilities, just giving a bit of more details. So we again have the four areas around the solution capabilities. And you see here the, um, more of the details of the functionality, what we are currently working on. There's also an indication, the areas which are kind of um, shaded here, they will come at a later stage, like the business partner collaboration, what I mentioned earlier. But with this visualization, let me also emphasize um, the, the area, what we call the, the cross capabilities, auditability, data governance, these are areas which the development team is currently putting enormous effort in to really engineer product, which is solid then, and um, will then be fit for purpose when it comes to auditability from external parties. Good. Besides the individual capabilities, putting them just uh, on one level, um, on, on one slide. I also wanted to share with you our view, what we see, how this is bringing value to our customers. So starting on, this is basically mapping the business value versus a maturity and different areas, topics mapped against that. 
So the lowest value obviously is if you have an isolated sustainability reporting based on spreadsheets or any other tools, but not being linked to any other applications in the organization. And most important, not leveraging common data out of the organization. And this is the next block. And you see here, using corporate data as input. And the key thing here is this harmonization, getting it into the right structures and enriching it with external secondary data. So this is where I would really say, this is the heavy lifting. First get the data in and then get it into the right structures. Because um, if you think of, you have different cost centers, then locations, business units, and all of that, if you do your reporting in the end, you want to slice and dice it according to these structures for given timelines. So organizations change over, over time, that's um, kind of given, uh, it often feels. And if, if you say you define a certain reporting period, you need to have the structures underneath properly cleaned up so that all these changes are um, being considered and um, that you don't have any data clinches then in between. So therefore, this is really important. Then the next thing is to building on this, what we say, key data figure, then we have the tools to put it into these different semantic frameworks. So if we do the heavy lifting right, the data is available in a granular way, then you can deploy or use these data into different uh, frameworks, different structures. So that's then possible and not that difficult anymore. And also then this allows you to do the valuation and the impact measurement properly. And then when it comes to the latest maturity level, this is really then around doing the what if simulations modeling so that you really get an idea where can I improve the performance? And then that would be the last level of maturity so that you learn from the ongoing business processes and improve them on the fly, basically. Good. If we look at um, the architecture, th this is, super simple in terms of where the data is coming from. So obviously I was talking a lot about integration and tapping into existing SAP applications. So, but we are not naive around that. Not all our customers will have these all of these applications in place. So therefore the system is well designed to also consume data from other data sources, non-SAP or from manual data entry or just uh, simple spreadsheets. So this is the data source. And uh, here, what you see here, that's this multi-couple key figure ledger again, which is then consolidating and harmonizing the data in a granular way so that it can then easily be used for different frameworks. And here are just some examples. And also not to be forgotten, um, a lot of our customers, all of them basically have their own ambition in terms of what's relevant for their industry, particularly based on their history. So they have their own KPIs, which they also want to see in the application. And all of that is relatively easily be done if this key figure ledger is well established. And here is an example, just to make it a bit more tangible, how that will work. So this is an example around the, the, the people agenda, looking at diversity of 
uh, around um, the people that I mentioned. So we take the information from Success Factor or HDM, Human Capital Management, from SAP. Then this is being harmonized and put in different structures in the key figure ledger. And then on the top layer, we, we make it uh, consumable in different structures. And here, this is according to the WEF matrix. So the measuring stakeholder capitalism, one of the 21 KPIs. And this is just one of the examples, but um, I picked that purposely because um, with uh, general availability, the release of the product, which is planned for December 2021, we will also uh, ship the uh, WEF framework. And this is what is indicated here. As mentioned, the WEF framework comes with 21 KPIs. And again, I need to emphasize, this is just one example. We're well aware, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning, there are a lot of other frameworks uh, out there which are also relevant, maybe even more relevant than the WEF framework. But we pick that um, as it is, we see it as a kind of best practice. It's also manageable. It's not coming with two, 300 of KPIs. And um, we will provide that basically with a plug and play character. So if customers have the underlying applications, this is what I just um, turned on in this animation. You see here where the different data are coming from. So you see a lot from coming from HR, certain parts are from the EHS side and there a lot are actually from our finance. So if these underlying applications are in place, it's really kind of a plug and play. Again, as said earlier, we're well aware that not all of these applications are already in place at our customers. So therefore we can also connect to other systems or um, having other data sources or manual uploads being consumed here. And then as this is just one example, as mentioned, the web framework, what we do here is we, we talk a lot to our partners. It's a real ecosystem play here because um, we see an enormous potential here to scale through our partners to respond to all the different frameworks. And beside the different frameworks, obviously there are industry standards, different regions have specific requirements. And this is what we currently discuss with uh, a lot of our different partners. And for example, one of the partners already committed to um, provide a uh, package on the EU taxonomy, which is also super critical for a lot of our customers. So this will come in Q1 next year. And others then we discussing currently around GRI, SASB, TCFD. So that uh, I would expect by mid next year, we really have a, a solid set of content packages to serve our customers. And these content packages basically come with the connectivity to the underlying systems, then with the logics to do the data enrichment and modeling and also with uh, kind of a top layer for the analytics and the disclosure reporting. Good. Here I have some lab previews with me and um, the latest data I have seen of the product is pretty much in line with what you see here. But just to give you a bit of an indication of the look and feel of the product which uh, is, up to, is up to come in December. Good, then before we come to the Q&A section, just um, three, four points, which I want to make sure um, they are with you. The first thing is really 
we have a strong focus when it comes to sustainability control trial, we have a strong focus on automation. So this is why we put so much effort into the connectivity of the underlying applications. And then on the key figure ledger, doing this harmonization of the uh, data and bringing it into the right structures. Um, this is followed then by the uh, capability that uh, if the data is available in that structure, it's easy to report it against different standards. And that's what I explained here. We are collaborating with several partners to really be quickly out in the market. And then the other thing is our strong focus on performance management that we have the analytics tool, but it's really then important to understand and also have a hand on the processes to really improve the performance. So having the right means available to do this action tracking measurements, abatement projects, so to really have an, a performance management uh, component embedded here. And this is also then with this closed loop, this um, virtual circle of business transformation that we embed the sustainability information back into the business processes. Good. And with that, I'm basically done with my presentation. And uh, let me look into the chat if there are questions. Yeah, if you want to start with Q&A, we had some questions that came in. But first of all, thank you for the detailed presentation, giving us insights into um, uh, yeah, sustainability control tower. Yes, um, I, I'm just reading the, the first question. Can we push data into the control tower using APIs? Um, then that's a clear yes. So that's one of the, the standard ways to consume data out of other systems to, to pull it in via APIs into the sustainability control tower. Then another question, will the control tower be built on app analytics or will it be an independent module? So we, with this question, it's a very good question. We need to uh, look at it from two sides. Basically, from a technical point of view, it is um, building on SAP Analytics Cloud. So we, we don't uh, reinvent the wheel here, obviously. So we use the existing um, functionalities within the SAP portfolio. The second part of the question is, or will it be an independent module? So it is an independent product. So therefore it, it's not part of SAP Analytics Cloud. It's, it's a purpose-built application, what the development is currently doing. So therefore it comes with a separate price tag. So therefore it's the, the two um, views and two worlds we need to uh, differentiate. From a technical point of view, it is leveraging SAP Analytics Cloud, but um, as it comes with a lot of additional and further functionality, it needs to uh, be purchased separately. It's an additional price tag, yeah. Good. Okay. Um, just before we jump over to the questions raised in chat, it's also possible for the audience, if you want to raise your hand and speak up, uh, we can also unmute you. Um, but meanwhile, while you might want to consider that, let's go to the next question. It's posted in chat by one of the SAP partners. So superb insights on um, sustainability control tower. As a partner, how can I get access to some of these collaterals and early watch demos to engage with the prospects? Um, here it says, I think that's a good one. I'm a little bit confused now whether I should be using the dashboard reporting features of example PFM. PFM stands for product footprint management 
or the feeding data from PFM into the control tower? What is the direct SAP direction SAP are following? So I think that's a very crucial question. And sorry if I'm not, um, we're not able to make that explicit clear. The motivation of the sustainability control tower is really to have a 360 um, degree view on sustainability. If you remember that circle on the WEF matrix that looked at environment, people, prosperity, governance. So it, it's really across all the different dimensions of sustainability. And that's, if you we look at the, the screenshots, I'm not sure if that's, it's, yeah, you don't see that properly here, but um, the tool will be super clean in terms of just giving these users an overview. It will then come with drill down functionalities if you need to have further information, but on the first um, motivation is really to have an overview. And then we also not reinventing certain details and analytical tools because um, we basically link then to other applications. So we're not reinventing an HR dashboard or a product footprint management dashboard. So that will then rather be linked from the control tower into it. But the, the third, first thing is really have the, the key figures in a structure according to the different frameworks and looking at the actions. It's also a repository of actions then what we want to establish here, but really holistically all over sustainability. Good, I think that was a good question. Yeah, then we have another question in Q&A from okay. Bruno. In terms of SAP data sources to feed to SCT, apart from PFM, EHS, success factors, fines, et cetera, I haven't seen mentions about SAP MII with the energy management to track energy usage. Is MII, MII stands for Manufacturing Intelligent Integration or other way around intelligent, being considered to be used for example, to get energy consumption from shop floor, shop floor machineries. Um, MRI for us is kind of a shop floor tool where you get the data directly from the, from the shop floor, from the machines. Um, what, what we do here, um, we want to establish um, reporting granularity, performance tracking on a, on a monthly basis in the end which is already from most of our customers, if not even all, a huge uh, improvement because they these days they do that on an annual basis. Um, so what I want to say is in, in this view, looking at sustainability performance, there's no need for real-time data. So in certain areas, there might be the need, but then we have dedicated tools to do so. But really on an overview layer, then there would be an aggregation in between. So it, it's not foreseen to have direct MII feeds into the application. Good. All right, that was all the questions so far. Um, anyone that would like to uh, speak up, feel free to raise your hand. I'll watch the participant list to not miss your hand <laughs> raised. Um, for any further questions that you might have after this call, um, feel free to go to community.sap.com slash topics where you'll find the sustainability um, community topic page with lots of um, featured content, upcoming calls, all the recordings of past community calls, and um, also where you can 
um, continue to ask questions and connect with other community members and experts. Uh, for now, I would say we can um, we can we can close the call if no other question comes up. You still have the opportunity now. Um, but if not, I'll stop the recording for now. And thank you uh, very much for your attendance. Also, Christian, uh, really great to have you here. Um, what a pleasure. Great answers. And I also see in the chat, uh, excellent presentation. Thanks very much. Uh, coming from Bruno, who also raised one question. So thanks to the audience that has been very interactive today. And yeah, hope to see you in one of our next community calls again. <laughs> thank you. Have a good rest of day. Bye, bye everyone. Bye.